send, send. A few months ago, this bizarre video appeared on YouTube. Hello there. My name is John McAfee. I'm the founder of the McAfee Antivirus Software Company. Although I've had nothing to do with this company for over 15 years, I still get volumes of mail asking, how do I uninstall this software? I have no idea. He packs a lot of craziness into the four minute video and finishes by ridiculing the multi-billion dollar antivirus software company, which still bears his name. 15 years ago, I had some beautiful software and they took it over. I don't know what they did. It was like the time I hired that Bangkok prostitute to do my taxes while I fucked my accountant. It was terrible. The same fucking thing is going on now. But I know what to do. I know exactly what to do. Believe me, I've got a fucking solution right here. Hello there. My name is John McAfee. Perfect. In my last video, I didn't have... His second to... short video, being edited here today, is no less provocative. Uh, you can't tell that she was actually giving me head. Isn't there a shot where she's I looking didn't. up over the I desk? Not, uh, actually know that you why are you producing these short films? Why not? Because I'm 67 and bored. That's one reason. It's a lot of fun. I get to hang out with cute girls who are scantily clad. That's number two. Uh, and number three, I get to say something that the world will actually listen to that you can't edit. McAfee is a renowned prankster, and I know he particularly enjoys tricking journalists. So I'm on high alert from the outset. Let's go all the way back. I mean, my, my first trip to the Amazon, uh, when I went to Ecuador and went down the river and first tasted human flesh, the, um, the attraction for human flesh was like so profound that, you know, when I came back to the States and they accused me of eating small children, I wasn't sure that I had actually done it or not. Right. You realize um, I can't be using any of it. <laughs> you realize that none of that actually happened somehow. <laughs> But you were clever to catch on to it that fast. <laughs> in the second video, in his own sneaky way, he addresses the accusations being leveled against him. The four most popular factual questions are, number one, did I murder my neighbor in Belize? Was I manufacturing illegal drugs in Central America? Was I having sex with underage girls? And was I using bath salts? I can answer a resounding no to all three of those questions. In 2008, taking a Caribbean sea change, McAfee bought this beach home on the tourist enclave of Ambergris Cay in Belize. His behavior there wasn't what the locals were used to. Armed guards, aggressive dogs, and a steady stream of teenage girls sharing his bed. Then in November last year, his near neighbor, Greg Fall, a 52-year-old American retiree, was found dead in his home, the victim of an execution-style murder. McAfee instantly became a suspect. I am not charged with anything. There is not a shred of evidence. The police themselves says, we have no evidence against Mr. McAfee. There is nothing. The fact that he went on the run following the murder turned McAfee into a full-time celebrity with everyone, including Hollywood, wanting a piece of the action. Take Uno. He's cashing in too, selling his life story to a production company who are making an autobiographical documentary. And this, of course, was the result of uh, the hallucinogenic uh, quality of whatever drug he had given me. McAfee developed a serious drug habit in the 70s and 80s, including while he worked as a programmer at NASA. He even dealt drugs for a while, but says he hasn't touched any for 35 years. And it's all over now. To me, he just seems high on life. Awesome, my friend. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks a lot. He was already rich by the time he sold his company in the early 90s for $100 million. 
Who knows how much money he has now? Although these days, his life is considerably downsized. <laughs> he lives in a small rental apartment with only one girlfriend and two dogs. Now, I suppose some people uh, watching this are going to be a little confused and expect you to live in some sort of marble mansion or something. Well, I live in the safest place. Right now, you notice we're right on the corner on the top of the building. There is no one who can get anywhere close that I cannot see. Of who am I most worried about? I don't have a clue. I do know that the world knows or thinks that I have money and lots of it. Uh, they perceive me as an old, weak man and an easy target. For McAfee, it's not about paranoia, but about being prepared. But he's the first to admit that without being a little paranoid, he would never have thought up the idea for his antivirus software. Have you always carried guns, even in, you know, 30 years ago? Uh, since, I started, you... since I started McAfee, of course I carry guns. Everywhere. The thought is that if we kidnap him, cut off his ear and send it to his wife or his company or somebody, someone's going to give us a few, a few million bucks just to let him go. His security detail are ready for anything. Mini 14, Ruger. And then I got my noisy cricket, close and personal. It's my backup. And what, you've used these things before? <laughs> this, this, if I have to. This is an ex-cop. This is ex-military. Ex um, I'm an ex-programmer. <laughs> Who are you most worried about here in Portland? I mean, it's a, it's a quiet place, it's a long way from, you know, there's not, not, it's not a particularly dangerous city. Well, you know, what, what is a dangerous city? A dangerous to whom? Probably not dangerous to you. Uh, Bill Gates, who lives in a far safer city, surrounds himself with hundreds of security people who are highly armed and very aggressive. You know, we read in the paper yesterday where his people attacked some journalists uh, that got too close to him. Uh, you know, is he paranoid? And he lives in a far safer city than this. <laughs> McAfee's girlfriend, Janice Dyson, is a former stripper and prostitute. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they first met in Miami. Um, he was visiting from Belize and um, I met him on South Beach. He was at the news cafe having a cup of coffee and I'd walked by with my girlfriend and when he saw my butt he said that he just had to know who I was and so he told me I had the finest ass in Miami which quite a compliment. You know, it's quite a compliment. It's very true. It's very true. So you saw him as a potential client? As a poten yes, potential client. I've come to Belize to find out more about John McAfee's life here. Below is the idyllic Ambergris Cay, an island which flanks the world's second largest barrier reef. That's where McAfee bought his beach house, but I'm travelling to another property he bought on the mainland near Orange Walk, the second biggest city in Belize, with a population of 14,000 people on the fringes of the jungle. It was here that he set up his laboratory, apparently with big plans to make medicines from the native plants, and who knows, maybe even discover the world's next wonder drug. My guide to the now deserted compound is one of his former girlfriends, Samantha Vanegas. She lives next door in a house that he gave her after she started working for him. Which one's the lab? The green building. I used to work at his lab first before me and he started messing around. I know a little bit about doing the, the medicine. Right over here there was like a big long table with, with you know, science stuff. And then over here there were the um, measuring um, machines and the blender and all of stuff. It's not much in here. So what were you actually researching in that laboratory? Yeah, antibiotics and um, based on a new science called quorum sensing. Very, very exciting field. What do you know about that? Where's your expertise in that? I field? have none whatsoever, but I have a great interest in it. When he needed a break from tinkering in the lab, McAfee used to visit this bar in town. But he wasn't here for the beer or the sophisticated atmosphere. It was the readily available young girls he was after and the owner helped him find them. Well, I was the one, you know, that um, had John meeting a lot of beautiful girls. 
excuse my question, but are you a pimp? No, no, not really. When John always come to see me, I tell John, John, which one of these girls you like? You say the word, I, I put it in the plane. Yes. McAfee would then have the girls flown over to his beach house. He settled on seven favorites. Was I really living with seven women in Belize? Now oh, that's a tricky one. Uh, there were in fact days when all seven were present. These are the seven women. From left, Amy two, Amy one, Marcia, Angie, Tamisha, Zyra, and dear Samantha. Going in a dear Samantha remembers her relationship with McAfee as torrid and, well, tiring. His sex has to last long. I mean, you can't give him one or two hours. He wants, like, morning to day. I mean, like, you have to be in that bed from morning till, till the next day. And if you can continue till seven days, that's sex for him. Another common question is, did these women really try to kill me? Well, not all of them, of course. In fact, fewer than 50% tried to kill me. But you did try to, what, shoot, shoot him in the head, right? I did. And what, why? Because so I, I was jealous and tired of him, I guess. I also tried to cut his throat, but he just said, he just leaned against the wall and said, do it. I was angry. Whatever and let's way. include her second attempt in here too. Him. For some reason, I missed. You tried to shoot him? Uh-huh. I'm still deaf. And let's, let's, then let's cut to, I also tried to cut his throat. I'm still deaf in my left ear from a gunshot fired at close range when Amy tried to shoot me in the head. Amy Emschwiller was only 16 when she moved into McAfee's beach house. That's her to the left of McAfee in this photo taken on his jetty. And that's Samantha on the other side. McAfee believes she also tried to kill him. I was fed up of he doing stuff to me and I don't do anything. And I just picked up the gun and said, I'm going to kill you. And he took it as a threat. Get the color of his eyes, which are kind of... Uh... There was a witness to the madness at McAfee's beach house. He'd invited an American cartoonist to Belize to produce a comic book about his life. Chad Esley struggled to find any humor in the situation. The situation there was kind of tense uh, with some of the people he was surrounding himself with or people who were moving against him in some way, and it wasn't very funny to me. It was, uh, there was a, there, I think there were a few dangers there that were, it was just not a, it was not a good, it was not a good scene. One chapter recreates the night Amy tried to kill McAfee. But I closed my eyes. Maybe I didn't want to see the shooting because by then maybe I had actually grown to like him. So that's a, a little teaser. <laughs> Why do you think she tried to kill him? Um, I think just for the gangs, for money. I think just for money. Really? I, I think it, it must have been either a like a lover's spat or money or both or gang stuff. They fought a lot. It was either generosity or self-interest that prompted McAfee to donate masses of equipment to the Belizean police. Guns, handcuffs, tasers, pepper spray, batons. Back in Orange Walk, he even built them a police station. I bought a number of fully automatic weapons. Um, when they used to, used to drive by my house in their trucks, they would take their automatic weapons and do like, you know, shake, shake a bar, you know. Uh, like, yeah, yeah, you know, like, thank you. Uh, they felt empowered. But McAfee was ruffling feathers by employing thugs and ex-criminals for his security team. He'd appointed himself as a crime fighter to chase off the local drug dealers and had some success. But he says his troubles began when he refused to pay a large bribe to a senior politician. There were probably a million dollars a year or two million a year out of his pocket when when I threw the, the drug dealers out. So um, in his mind, it was simply, you owe it to me. And what happened next? Um, he went away and I thought, cool, that's the end of that thing. And then a, a week later, I was raided by 42 armed soldiers. McAfee believes it was payback by the politician when his compound was raided in April last year. On suspicion, he was making illegal drugs in his lab. 
if I came out with, uh, naked with a handgun, I laid mine down as soon as I saw the, the soldiers marching in, for, in formation down my driveway. Um, I, I put my pants on, went back outside before I could even get outside the door. I was grabbed, thrown up against the wall. A uh, piece of paper was shoved in my face. You know, this is the warrant. Um, and the day was pretty much a nightmare. He tells me they held him for hours in handcuffs and shot his dog in front of his eyes. Whether or not they really believed McAfee was producing illegal drugs, they found nothing. Uh, half the town had worked for me at one point in, in time or other and, and worked in the lab collecting flowers and processing antibiotics. So um, it was, everybody knew I wasn't doing that, but they had to have some legal reason to raid me. McAfee was arrested on weapons charges, but then released. But he's still seething at the injustice and has been complaining about it ever since. This will blow over here. I'm not going to fucking be quiet. You shot my fucking dog. You destroyed my fucking property and you tortured me. I am not going to shut the fuck up. He returned to his beach house on the island and continued his tirade against the Belizean government. Then, four months after the raid on his lab, the murder of Greg Fall shocked the island. The American expatriate lived three houses down from McAfee and had to walk past his armed guards and dogs to get to a bar further along the beach. The dogs were noisy and intimidating. Fall made a formal complaint to the council and told anyone who would listen that he was going to poison them. We didn't have a relationship. In five years, I spoke less than 50 words to this man. None of them were, were, were bad words. In the last couple of months, I did speak to him twice. And both times he said, you got to do something about your dogs. I go, I agree. They're annoying me too, and I'm trying everything I can do. Then one night in November last year, some of McAfee's dogs were poisoned. When his guards discovered them dying, he says he shot them to put them out of their misery. A day later, Greg Fall was killed in his home with a single bullet to the back of the head. Many Belizeans believe McAfee was responsible. Did you kill your neighbor? Let me make this perfectly clear. I had nothing whatsoever to do with the murder of Gregory Fall, nothing. I mean, and it's not something that, that could ever possibly enter my mind. It is my belief that agents or subsidiaries or affiliates of, of Mr. Mr. McAfee were involved in Mr. Paul's undoing. There's no one else who's interested in doing it. Belizean journalist Jules Vasquez covers a lot of stories about gang violence, but he says this was different. We have a lot of crime in Belize, we have a lot of murders, but that crime did not fit in with any, any recognizable type of crime. I suppose that many people believe or, or, or think that you did do it because of the timing of the poisoning of the dogs and then you escaping that sa the next day. Right, okay, but those people aren't thinking. I mean, if I were a moron, a, a total blithering idiot, then maybe, and if I had the inclination to, to murder someone, I would shoot them or whatever happened the day after they did something to me. I am not. I mean, get real. If in fact I was intent on revenge, I would hope that I would have enough sense to wait six months. Uh, the next fucking day? I am, I am uh, please give me some credit. We're gonna run to here is McAfee on the run, traveling with his entourage, including one of his girlfriends, Samantha Venegas. McAfee didn't stick around to be questioned about the murder. Instead, he invited a film crew from Vice magazine to document his flight from Belize to Guatemala. They had amazing access to him while he was on the run and hiding out, and a feature documentary is coming soon. Unfortunately for McAfee, Vice magazine accidentally gave away their location with GPS data encoded in a photo they published. McAfee was detained for illegally entering Guatemala, then feigned a heart attack and managed to get himself deported back to the United States. While the media focused attention on the McAfee circus, the other character in the drama was overlooked. Hello, Mr. Fall. Yes, hello. 
I've come to Jacksonville, Florida to meet Greg Fall's father, Arthur. We had visited Greg in October, uh, just exactly a month before his murder, and this picture was taken the day that we left Belize to come back to the States. So as far as I know, it's the last picture taken of Greg. We, we did a, an awful lot together, and uh, it's a terrible loss, just a terrible loss. Do you believe that McAfee was involved? You're, you're convinced that McAfee was involved? Not entirely, but, but, but why would he run? Why did he not answer the questions? And if, if he has nothing to hide, why doesn't he speak? It's very frustrating to find that, 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 that he gets all the attention and my son's kind of a prop for his, for his infamy. Police say McAfee is still a person of interest and the case is still open. Uh, we'd like to know his whereabouts that night, where he was, and to confirm his alibi if he has one. Do you think John killed Greg Fall? No. I know for a fact he didn't kill him. How do you know for a fact? Because he was with me that night when that incident happened. And he was right there the whole night with me till the morning and he never left my side. So I know that he didn't kill that guy. So if John McAfee didn't kill Greg Fall, who did? One of your girlfriends, for example, tried to kill you a few times. So, I mean, it could have been her, couldn't it? More than one of my girlfriends tried to kill me a few times. Could have been one of them, couldn't it? I mean, it could have been anybody. This is the, these are just the facts. The fact that you tried to kill John McAfee a couple of times makes you look kind of like a volatile person. Maybe uh, I am, I don't know. Yeah. And, and then that, that kind of leads you to question whether you were somehow involved in the murder of Greg Fall. Sure it does, but I didn't. Have you heard other people yes. saying that? Suspecting that you had something to do with it? Yes. Other Belizeans or foreigners? Or? Foreigners and Belizeans too. Mm -hmm. And what, does it, it doesn't bother you? No. She says she was nowhere near Fall's house on the night of the murder. But considering her own beloved dog was amongst the animals poisoned that night, it's surprising that police never questioned her. Did the police ever talk to you, interview you? No. Really? No, they never did because I wasn't here. Okay. It does seem odd to me that they wouldn't have wanted to talk to you because... You I heard they wanted to talk to me, but uh, John gave me money and whatnot to go to Guatemala and st I stayed there for a while. I never came to the island. And why was that? Why? Yeah. Because I didn't want anybody to question me or lock me up for no reason. Mm -hmm. And I guess John didn't want that too, so. Arthur Fall has asked his government to help find his son's killer. But all they could offer was this letter. Traditionally, Belize has a poor record of properly investigating unsolved cases, and these cases rarely brought to a successful conclusion. And that's signed by the Vice Consul of the American Citizen Service of the U.S. Embassy in Belmopan, Belize, which doesn't give me any warm, fuzzy feelings about our government. John McAfee has now put his Belizean problems well behind him, and he's settling back into a relatively normal, carefree life. Today, he's test driving a boat he wants to buy. Hey, uh, Janice, honey, come up here. Yeah, we're right here, Red. I know, I want to show you the foredeck. Uh, if someone came and wrote you a check or brought you a suitcase full of cash, uh, what would be your bottom price? Uh, less than 69. Okay, well, that's good. Good day. <laughs> As they settle the deal, he can't resist showing them his latest YouTube video. I'm surprised you haven't seen it. <laughs> yeah, totally, bitch. <laughs> So the reason I'm doing these videos is I got to keep this. I got to keep the public interest in me, yep. right? Well, I can do it by doing any number of things: being a bad guy, being a good guy, being a fool, being all three at once, uh, whatever it takes. I like it. His only real concern these days seems to be finding new props for his videos, in what seems to be an endless quest to shock and attract attention. The eight women's uh, t-shirts are for the ladies in the video. The scene will open with me having sex with a sheep. His principal defect, I believe, 
is extreme narcissism. There's probably a psychiatric term for it. And he's a fame whore. And the rush of celebrity has engorged his ego so greatly that it's like a high that he can't come down from. It is obviously the work of someone who has a serious attention-seeking disorder.